What's going on guys, Coach Colin here, coolest high performance coach in the world, and if you are looking for the absolute best insights to the podcast you love, you've come to the right place. Now the next step, smash the subscribe button. There might be something up there, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. We're at episode 1901 with Stephen Pressfield of the Joe Rogan Experience. Now in these two clips that I'm going over, we're talking about people projecting onto other people because of a little bit of self-hatred and we're going into unmet needs and I think those two things correlate which is why they talk about them kind of hand in hand um, and I have my own experience with both I've had people project onto me and I've had I've had the unmet needs and and I've also been the person projecting and I think we've all had that let's get into it now, I would say, just as a sidebar here about the people that write hateful things, that that's their own resistance. That's mm. where that's coming from. Yes. Like, if they see a comic that's succeeding or anybody else, what's really happening is they have a dream, whether they could articulate it or not, and they're not enacting it in any way. Yeah. They're not doing a sober October in any way. So they see you or they see somebody else succeeding, and it's like a terrible reproach to them. It's like, how can Joe do that shit? They don't, it's on the unconscious level. They're not aware of it, right? Yeah. He's doing something, and I'm not. And so they really hate themselves, and they project that outward. And I know this is true because I've gotten those shitty letters, you know, from people and shitty emails from people. And when I've engaged with them at all, which I rarely do, it's only one or two exchanges before they'll admit, you know, I really felt I really hated you because I thought you were doing something. I've got a book in me and I wish I had written and I hadn't mm. written and that's why. And then and and then they'll actually will become friendly, mm. you know, and I'm so sorry I wrote that to you. I really didn't mean writing it to you. So I think that uh, if you think about the phenomenon of resistance on a sort of national or global level, like um, it's a big thing. Yes. You know, a lot of polarization, what we call that shit, really comes on an individual level from that sort of thing, from people that know they have a gift or a dream or something and know, even unconsciously, that they're not doing it. Mm. and they hate themselves for that. They feel bad, you know, as anybody would, right? That is 100% true. One, I see it all the time. I see it in people. I even see it in the comments on these videos sometimes. It's people, and again, the fact that he brings up that it's like, it's unconscious. And I, and I don't even know if it's unconscious or it's been pushed to the back of your mind. Whatever that dream was, whatever that passion was, has been like stamped out and pushed and just pushed and put in a box and just pushed, pushed to the back of your mind to the point where you kind of forgot about it. But if you sat and thought about it long enough, you'd be like, yeah, I, I wish I was doing that thing. It's so true. People, we end up projecting. Like when we see somebody doing something that we unconsciously wish we were doing ourselves, we do tend to attack that person because in our mind, and this is what I believe, I believe in our mind, that kind of projecting that way, spewing that hate, it kind of gives us an excuse. So it's, it's, it's almost like we're doing it to ourselves. The same, the same way we kicked ourselves and extinguished our own flame through society, through, you know, working that nine to five job that we don't really like the same way we did that. Like now we're doing it to somebody else because now they're awakening that us in, in us again. And in the awakening of whatever that dream could possibly be for us, that thing that we're not doing in the awakening of that comes a lot of pain because you're not doing it and you could have been doing it for the past 10 years, but instead you did this other thing that you're not really interested in, and it hurts. My example of that for me is stand-up comedy. I did stand-up comedy for a year, and I have friends who do stand-up comedy, and I'm not, I don't spew hatred at them. I don't try and dismiss what they're doing. I always try to be as supportive as I possibly can and, and let them know that they're killing it and laugh at their jokes and like their clips and like everything like that. 
I always try to do that because I know how hard it is. But I do, I, I am very conscious of the fact that I wish I was doing what they were doing. Like I, I, I think about doing stand up every single day. Every, not a day goes by where I don't think to myself, man, I wish I was going on stage today. I wish I was doing sets. You know, I wish that joke that I wrote that I was doing that today. I think about it every single day. And when I hear Joe talk about stand up comedy with like Ari and, and Shane and, and Mark and I'm just like, man, I wish I was doing that. And I see what point that they're at and I'm like, I don't know if I'll ever get there because I'm not doing it. You know, but like my friends who are like still starting out, like I try to be as supportive as possible, but I definitely like, and I don't like spew the hatred or anything, but I definitely do feel that I don't, I don't want to say self-hatred, but a little bit of sadness, like, like, man, I wish I was doing that. And I understand the mindset of someone that feels like that so well, because the reason that I, I don't walk down that road is because it's like, it's such an uncertain road. It's so uncertain. And I'm just like, am I going to be able to make it doing that? Like, you know, like I, I think the same things that everybody does. It's like, I have a wife. I want to have kids. I want to be able to support. I want to be there. I want to be present. I don't want to be like my father and not be around. And if I'm doing good at stand up, then I'm on the road. And if I'm on the road, I'm not with my family. And I don't want my kids to grow up like that. I don't want to be away from my wife all night. You know? But at the same time, it's like, man, I wish I was doing that. I love that life. I love the people that you get to be around. I get the free, I love the freeness that you get to have in conversation with those people. Most of them. Some of them are very leftist and, you know, everything's upsetting to them. But, but I get it. I so get it. That's why when somebody comments negatively on, on these, on these videos, I'm just like, all love, man. Thanks. Like, you know. I get it even if they don't get it I get it there's something that you want to do and you see me doing this thing and you think it's like all glamorous which it's not it's just a video and I get it and it's hard man and that's why I push so hard for people to like pursue that thing that's inside of them because it's like there's going to be no better feeling in your life than when you actually pursue that thing and take on that challenge and walk down that path that feels uncertain and like make it work. There's, there's no better feeling. I've done it in other things, but like stand up is like the thing that's like on my heart, you know? So I wish that for anybody. I really do. I wish that for you. I hope that you do that thing. I hope that you make it happen. You know, I hope that you, you stumble and you persevere and you build resilience and thick skin. I, I really do hope that for you. Anyway, they're going to get into unmet needs, which I also think goes hand in hand with this. You know, right now we're talking about people projecting and why they project. But as they get into unmet needs, it just make it, it starts to make that mindset make a lot more sense. So let's get into it. I'm drinking too much. I'm getting fat. I'm not doing, you know, mm. and so, but it's impossible for most people to accept that about themselves and say, oh, I'm really, you know, I'm really fucking up, you know. So they project it onto some other group, immigrants, you name it, right? Yeah, they just and, don't have the tools yet. Yeah. No one has provided them with the tools. Yeah. There's a great quote, I forget who said it, but I've, I've said it ad nauseum, that um, all criticism is the tragic result of unmet needs. Hmm. There's like something more to that. Who wrote yeah. that quote? Someone wrote that. Let's see, let's see if we can find that. Because there's some, there's more to it. But that resonates. That that's the reason why people get shitty. It's like I always say, like, the people that are killing it in life, they're not. You think LeBron James is leaving YouTube quotes? You think <laughs> yeah. Le LeBron James is going on comments and and fucking with people? Every criticism, judgment, diagnosis, diagnosis, and expression of anger is the tragic expression of an unmet need. And this is Marshall Rosenberg. Ah. What a great quote. 
That is such a great quote. Now, I would take it a step beyond that. And it seems like when you say an unmet need, that the person is waiting for someone else or some other force to supply their quote unquote need. I would say they aren't, they aren't addressing that need themselves. Mm. They aren't aware of it and they aren't doing anything about it. Yeah. And that's where the, that anger and that hatred comes from. Click there where it says the tr top 25 because it goes even further. Um, there's, there's another, at the root of every tantrum and power struggle are unmet needs. And that's another Marshall Rosenberg quote. I don't like the whole phrase unmet needs because it feels to me like we're, we're projecting out to somebody else, expecting them to come and satisfy us in some way, mm -hmm. you know? And that, that, that's not the answer, I don't think. No, I don't the think answer it's... is sober October yeah. and you yourself addressing that need, whatever it is. Oh, most certainly, that's the answer. But I think by saying unmet needs, is like they feel like they're supposed to get something that True. they're not True, I agree getting. with that. Yeah. But it's just what, what is going to address that? Well, that's one of the things that makes me feel like when I'm on the right path, that I, all I'm thinking about is what I'm doing, and I'm not even remotely concerned with getting praise mm -hmm. or getting any, any, anything else for it. Because all I'm thinking about is doing the thing because I don't have unmet needs. So I've, 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 my cup is full. Uh -huh. So yeah. all I'm thinking about is the work. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't want to be recognized. I'd rather not be recognized. I'd rather be able to sneak through a restaurant and have no one know who I am. Uh huh. <sighs> yeah. So unmet needs. Like, like he, he just, uh, he just kind of summed it up perfectly. It's like, he's been doing the thing that he wants to do for so long that he has no more unmet needs. And if he wasn't doing that thing, he would be like all those other people projecting and slinging hatred at you or, you know, slinging hatred at certain famous people or whoever is doing the thing, you know, whoever's doing the thing that they might see as like, you know, glamorous or cool following their dream it's like when you're following your dream you have zero hatred for anybody following theirs you're just like man i'm glad you're doing it too you're doing it too wow you know like it's like if you're running a business that you've always wanted to run you're you're not hating on anybody else running a business you're like i know exactly what you're going through i i get why you're doing it it's like great good for you man it's all those unmet needs. That's why it's like I got a comment on another video at one point, and I was like, I can tell you're just going through something, because it's like you don't even know me, and like this is just a random video that popped up, and you're like, shut up, like <laughs> I don't even know you, man. Like obviously you're going through a thing, you know. And if we would just address those unmet needs in our lives. Because it's not always just, you know, following your dream. Sometimes it's something else. But towards what Mr. Pressfield was saying about how, like, people need to address that in themselves, it's like some people don't even know what the needs are. Like, if you, I'll use myself as an example, like, if you are neglected as a child and, and you grow up and now you're a grown person, you might not even know that the unmet need is, like, nurturing or someone being really nice to you or getting some words of affirmation. You, you just don't know. You don't know what you don't know, you know? So, yeah, I don't know. It's just with, with those two things, it kind of sums it up perfectly. If you could just meet all the needs, you know, follow the dreams, be surrounded by the people you need to be surrounded with, have that person, that partner, that, that, that love, that love soulmate person. If you just had all those things, you wouldn't feel a need to, to sling hatred on YouTube or to look down upon people who are doing certain things. Like you just wouldn't. And it explains Joe's mindset so much. And sometimes you can look at that mindset and be like, Oh, well he's rich. Of course he doesn't care. But it's like, he didn't care before he was rich because he was doing the thing that he always wanted to do. He's been doing it since he was what? 19, 20. He's like 50, 56 now. So he's been doing it his whole life whole life he's been doing the thing he wants to do 
So no wonder he's such a calm person. And he always gets to do the things that he wants to do. And, you know, rich or not, I think we all have that capability as well. You know, there was a gentleman who commented on one of my videos and he said, like, you know, it's hard for him to do that because he has a wife and a kid and, and stuff like that. It's like, well, do it on the smallest level possible. You know, just do it on the smallest level possible. You know, you want to you want to run marathons like David Goggins, but you don't have the time to just do that. Well, then just just run a mile around your block every day. Like if your passion's really like getting after it and running, you know, maybe you want to be a bodybuilder, but you don't have access to the, the craziest gyms, you know, just, you know, buy some dumbbells and just get after it the way that you can. You don't have to go after it the way you see the best people in the world getting after it. Go after it in your own way. And then me with stand up, I gotta, I gotta figure that out. You know, we all have our things to figure out. But um, again, um, just, yeah, you know, projecting on people and unmet needs. I really do think they are one in the same. And that if you could just fulfill all your needs, find out what they are and then fulfill all of them on the smallest in the smallest way that you possibly can. That makes you feel fulfilled and happy. I think you will have no more want to project anything onto anyone else. And again, this is episode 1901 with Stephen Pressfield. And uh, we're ending that off at a minute and 37, uh, an hour and 37 minutes, 56 seconds. The link in the description will bring you right to the full interview. If you want to check that out, it's a great interview. This is the last clip I'm doing on um, Stephen Pressfield. So we're moving on. We're moving on to other podcasts. But yeah, man, this is actually a great interview and you should really check it out. Um, again, if you want more of these insights, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to project on me, go ahead. The comment section's below. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>